Good day and welcome to another episode of Kiwi Car Life. And today I'm going to be telling you the five things I like and the five things I dislike about my Honda Integra Type R. So the first thing that I absolutely love about this car is the noise. It sounds absolutely awesome. When it comes on VTEC, that incredible noise that you get from it is just fantastic. I absolutely love it. It's zingy, it sounds just fantastic. Oh man, I'm just saying the same words over and over again because the noise of this car really is just absolutely phenomenal. The next thing that's really brilliant about this car is how it goes around corners. The handling is absolutely sublime. It feels very stable, it doesn't really bounce around too much, the suspension is nice and supple, and through these corners it just feels so stable. The peak grip that you can get out of this thing is absolutely phenomenal. Another thing that I think is absolutely fantastic about this car is the boot space. Believe it or not, I've been able to get a whole bike in here, I've been able to get four lads and all their gear for a week's holiday in here, and I've even slept in the back of here. So there is certainly no shortage of space despite the coupe look. Ever since I bought the car, I've been keeping a log of fuel cash. And to my surprise, I've actually been getting significantly better fuel economy than I expected. I was expecting more like 9 or 10 for the similar to my Accord, smaller engine, but it's you know, more highly strung, uses more fuel. But actually, I've been averaging 7.5 years behind the which for a highly strung 2 litre, I think is pretty darn good. So the final thing that I really like about its car is its reliability. This car has done 212,000 Ks now, which in American is a million miles. So it's been going for a long time. And I imagine, given the type of car that it is, none of those miles would have been easy. And yet it's still here and it has basically no problems. The gearbox grinds a tiny bit in second gear and the VGC actuator needs replacing, but they are wear and tear items that I will probably get done at some point, but it's never left me stranded in the 6,000 Ks that I've owned it. It's, it's brilliant. So the first big thing that's really annoying about this car, and you can especially hear it on the motorway, is noise and vibration. When you're moving at decent speed, there is wind noise coming from absolutely all over the place. The engine's revving at well over 3,000 RPM, which is quite droney and quite annoying. It was a lot worse when it had the exhaust, not so bad now, but you can still hear it in the background droning away. And the other thing is the jolly vibrations. I mean, it's not doing it at the moment, but quite often the glove box rattles and there's something behind my seat, I don't know if it's in the roof or something, that rattles away all the time whenever you go over bumps and stuff. And so there's very little sound deadening, very little stuff in the way of vibration avoidance. So it's just a very tiresome car to drive long distances at speed. Another thing that's inherently frustrating is the lack of back seat space. Now I'm six foot one and I just fit. Ooh. But it's by no means comfortable. My head's hitting the roof. My legs are uh, quite sort of at, at large angles, shall we put it that way, which uh, makes it not a terribly comfortable place to sit. 
and the chia smacks you in the leg. So the third thing that's not so brilliant about this is that it takes no less than 98 octane. And I thought my Accord was fairly bad with 95, but that was $2.20 a litre, which is child's play compared to what this thing takes. Before the fuel prices plummeted, I was looking at over $2.50 a litre for fuel, which is pretty insane, really. And you look over across to the other people in the fuel station, see them filling up their crummy hatchbacks with 91, and you go, mate, 50 cents a litre is quite a lot to save. But that said, like I talked about before, the fact that it runs on a high octane fuel means you get better fuel consumption, you prolong the life of the engine, so it has advantages and disadvantages there. But the cost factor is a bit frustrating. Another thing that's not especially ideal is the comfort. Now I have to admit, when I first got into this I was quite surprised and I thought that it was quite comfortable. However, I can agree that as cars go, it is far from being a Rolls Royce. As you can see, over some of these bumps, the ride is fairly supple, but still pretty firm, which means it jiggles you around a bit. And these seats, I really like them because they're very supportive, and they hold you in really well, and they kind of have that bear-hugging, you know, element to them. But the reality is, there are certainly more comfortable seats out there, you know, heated, cool leather seats with massaging things will be far better than these Recaros, that's for sure. So the final thing that's a little bit annoying about this car is that it doesn't have cruise control. In fact, it doesn't have anything really. I'm surprised it even has air conditioning. No cruise control, no sunroof, no electric seats, no keyless entry, no nothing. And I feel like I could do without all the other ones. In fact, I have done for most of the time in most of the cars that I've owned. However, Cruise control is one of those features that would be really convenient if it just had it. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode of Kiwi Car Life. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to go and check out some of the other videos that I've made. I'd really appreciate it. And starting next week, we're going to be starting two brand new series. We're going to have Kiwi Car Life news, where I'm going to bring you the latest and greatest of car news from the week gone by. And I'm also going to be starting a series reviewing coupes and convertibles or around the 20 grand mark of which this is going to make a feature so you can look forward to that and i will see you then but i think it's only fitting we finish this video with what's really the best thing about this car the noise